All right, is everyone ready to laugh? Some entertainment now? All right, all, coming all the way from Las Vegas, a not-so-famous psychic will attempt to give us a demonstration of his amazing powers of the mind. <laughs> Raul Martinez, everyone. Raul is a proud secular humanist and part-time comedian from Vegas. Born in Mexico City, he served as a member of the, on the board of, of the American Humanist Association for quite some time now. He was a plaintiff in the ACLU lawsuit for the right of atheists to reform marriages and successfully won. Thank you. He's been a humanist celebrant since then, since 2013. So he's currently a coordinator in Las Vegas for the Las Vegas Coalition of Reason and helped launch the Godless Community Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, performing for us, Raul Martinez. Yes, I am a very, very, very powerful side chick. Away. I'll move over here. Side chick, yes. And we should start by clarifying the correct pronunciation of the word. Side chick. Um, let me, uh, may, may I have your name? Alexis. May I ask you, um, do you say chocolate or chocolate? How do you say it? Chocolate! I rest my case, I cheek. Thank you very much, Alexis. I know that there's probably a, a little of skepticism in this room, this wallless, ceilingless room, uh, and that's fine. That's why I'm here. I know that psychic, uh, psychic abilities is not something that uh, uh, normal people in this group believe in. So I'm here to assist by giving you a demonstration. The psychic powers of the mind are undeniable, and I think that I have the tools required to give you the scientific evidence required to believe in that. I know that in Free Thought Day, you are 100% free to believe in the psychic powers of the mind, but you are also 100% free to believe something else. You can, you can be wrong as well. So, telekinesis, telepathy, clairvoyance, precognition. These are the names of my four hamsters at home that are really adorable, but you can tell by the names of my hamsters that I am really into this. So, you should take that into consideration. Also, I mean, don't believe in me just because of the, the jacket. It, it, I know they don't give this away just to anyone, that's one thing, but I want a little bit more. I know that when I perform these miracles, sometimes it happens uh, very fast. You can miss it. So, to ensure that we don't miss it at all, I am going to use a small prop. Every time that I perform a miracle today, I will be bringing this down so that we can all be at the same time and you won't miss the miracle. Now, I'm going to begin by doing a very uh, simple trick, uh, miracle. Uh, I will be guessing someone's name. And I will be doing this to ensure complete randomness. Um, We'll be using this ping pong ball. If the ball comes close to you, please catch it. Right? You will help us in this demonstration, yes. And this will ensure the randomness of the act and the, the, we are allowing basically the universe to take part in this experiment because no one knows where this ball is going to land. All right? Does that make sense? I, I knew that I could read your mind. Uh, all right. First experiment. 
One, two, three. Alexi. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Now, I know it's not that impressive. We're warming up, thank you, thank you. We're warming up, it's gonna get better, promise. But we have to start somewhere. Um, Alexis, that's my mother's name. I want to ask you a favor. I still sense a lot of skepticism on those little miracles that we've just performed. So I am going to have to raise the stakes. I am going to ask you to throw that ball, on the count of three, throw it behind you so that the universe is truly able, or, or, or actually look around and throw it at someone <laughs> so we don't have an empty chair. If the ball comes to you, please catch it so we can continue with this. Are you ready, Alexis? One, two, three. Yes! Got it, very good, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, may I have your name? Allison, your name is Allison. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's, that was Allison. I tricked you on that one. I'm sorry. That was too easy. I'm going to guess. Um, I'm, I'm going to reach into your brain with my brain. <clears throat> Not guess. I'm going to get your. Do you have a middle name? Very good. I am going to reach with my brain's hand into your brain. So your brain has to like open up and, and extend the hand as well. And so our hands, brain hands will shake. And don't don't try to block anything. If if you're part of any of this demonstration, don't block your thoughts. It doesn't work. It's it, it, you know what happens when you try to think of nothing? The state of marshmallow mind is what's gonna happen. Just block up your hands. Alright. Okay. Are we ready? Warming up, warming up the brain. Your middle name starts with a letter. Is that? Fine. A little more. It's just warming up, warming up. Um, it starts with an M, an S, L, P, L, L. I'm going to take like a 30% of that one. And the next letter is a A. I E O L M N O P Q. What's your middle name? Lynn! <laughs> I'm gonna take only a partial on that one. It's not a full one. I know you gave it to me, but there is definitely. Um, this is not the easiest thing to do. I, I'm, I'm serious. I I almost got it, so it was really close. So that's why I'm counting. It. But you may not feel it, but Jupiter right now is in absolute retrograde. And it's not helping with the brain passage here. This handshake, it's, yeah, you understand, you get the feeling, right? It, I think it's the 20 new moons that they discovered in uh, uh, Saturn. And by the way, if they weren't discovered, they weren't there before. That's, <laughs> they don't, they're not telling you that, but I can definitely feel it. So thank you very much. Lynn, that's my mother. Thank you. Lynn, I'm going to ask you a favor. I still sense a little bit of skepticism in this room. This open room. I'm going to ask you to throw that ball one more time on the count of three. We're going to find another person that is going to help us with this demonstration of the side chick power. Wait, wait. Are you looking around? Who, who wants it? Someone is interested in this? All right. Are we ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. You got it! All right, thank you very much, sir. I don't know you. Do I know you? Never met that. Uh, you look like a very fine human being. We should have one chapter. Um, I am going to finish all out with this. I know what I'm going to do. Did you know your great, 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 Grandfather? No? Okay. He's, he's doing great. He's very proud of you. He really is just... <laughs> I know, it's amazing. He's with us today. Uh, he's very, very proud of all your uh, your accomplishments. You know that thing you did with... Um, awesome. He really likes it. Uh, and, and, you know, 
it's it's keep up the good work. Basically, he's saying that you should continue with your great endeavors, all the things that you're planning. He's liking that. Uh, eat better and uh, exercise more. Thank you. I still sense some reluctance to believe. I don't think that you guys are giving yourselves a chance here. And, and, and I'm going to uh, quote David on this one. The psychic powers, you, you, you may not believe in them, but think again. Think again. All right, I'm going to do one more. I'll have the ball for something. Yeah. Expensive props for the show. I'm going to try something that will blow your mind. Yeah. What's your name? Shelly. Shelly, would you mind picking a number from one to two? You got it? You got it? I knew you were going to say that. That's not, not going to work. One or two? Three? No. 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 Go. No. Try again. No. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. So that is further evidence that this is going to happen. One or two. I'm going to say that she's going to say three again. Are you guys ready? One or three. Okay, okay, enough of this nonsense. You guys, I can tell you do not believe me, and it's not because of your face, it's because of your looks of incredulity. I can tell that you don't believe in this, because I'm reading your mind. All your minds are like, ah, I don't believe, don't believe, I can like, no, don't believe, you don't believe, don't believe, don't believe. Okay. You don't believe, you don't believe, you don't believe. Don't, 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 don't believe, don't believe, don't believe. Don't believe. No one believes. Hey! I got one convert today. Think again. Think again. I'm gonna put this over here. Okay. I will come to him. I am not really a side chick. A psychic. Side, no, side chick is really pronounced side chick. That one is cool. But I am not a psychic. I don't have mental power. There is no way to send your mental power through the air. But it doesn't matter. This opportunity that we have today, events like today, where we come and we share ideas by communicating, we're having a brain connection right now without telepathy. And that's the beauty of events like this, where we are able to share these great ideas among us. Among or amongst? Is it amongst? Among or amongst? Is what? Oh, which one? So how do, how do I say it? We're sharing ideas. We wouldn't say it. Well, but, but, but that's a good example right here. You just taught me something. I just learned something. This is an amazing process. Let's hear it for the exchange of ideas. No side chick power required. I want to drive this point home. And I know it's kind of a lame way to make a scientific point, but I'm a comedian. I'm not a scientist. So I do what I can. And to, to drive home the point that ideas are important, if you allow me for a second. If you go to Las Vegas, to the Luxor, for $75, you get Carotel. But for free at Free Thought Day, you get Raul Martinez with a silly light bulb hat. Perfect. And this ridiculous hat is with two purposes. The number one is to drive home the point that ideas are important. And because you can hashtag this, what a great idea. We'll do some pictures later, we'll take care of that. The second reason is not as important, it's just to cover my bald head. So I'm gonna wear this for a little bit longer too, to keep the illusion going. Ideas like today, ideas that we share today, ideas of separation of church and state, of civic engagement, of freedom of speech, of freedom of thought, these are beautiful ideas worth celebrating. 
And this idea is, it was 1692, excuse me, October 12, 1692, when Governor of Massachusetts, William Pitt, criticized the Salem Witch Trials for relying on spectral evidence. And today, I have done my best to use spectral evidence to demonstrate that we should never, ever, ever use spectral evidence. That is my attempt today. And I want to thank, I know we cannot talk to the dead, I know that there is no way to do that, but I like to think that if the ghost of Governor William Pitts was sitting with us today right here and listening to us exchanging these ideas, I want to think that he would be very, very happy. And then with the indulgence, I will finish my set with a, something a little serious, uh, not, not too serious, but whenever I find myself in uh, the company, such great company. People like yourselves that enjoy and appreciate this. Thank you very much. Let's, you know what, let's give it for the volunteers. Let's hear it for the volunteers. If you have worked in the secular uh, uh, movement for any length of time, you, you realize what a hard job it is and what a thankless job it is. So thank you so much for putting this together. And you know what, maybe let me take a moment to ask you to volunteer your cash. We always need money to keep this event going, and don't be frightened, I'm not asking you for a million dollars. I just want one dollar. You need to give me one dollar, and then you need to ask one million of your friends for the same amount. And that is what we're going to do to generate all this uh, uh, money for this organization. What I was going to say, when I find myself surrounded by group of people like yourself, it gives me an opportunity to, these are words, but I'm going to tell you, it's, it's not a poem, but to me it is. And these are words uh, from someone else. Let me show you one thing. And I do believe that this crowd appreciates There we go. Very small picture. On September 5th, 1977, uh, NASA launched Voyager 1, a spacecraft with a mission to uh, get the heck out of here, basically, to uh, research the solar system and beyond. And uh, it's still going. Uh, we're 40 years. Voyager 1 is the first human-made object that has left the solar system. And in February 14th, 1990, NASA instructed Voyager 1 to turn its camera around. Voyager 1 was already 3.7 billion miles away from Earth. They had already gone past Pluto at that point. And they took this picture. This picture is titled Pale Blue Dot. I know you can't see it. A lot of you have already seen this image. Uh, I will pass it around so you can see it. But basically, Earth on this image is one picture. One tiny blue pixel on the picture. No scientific value, but very deep emotional value. And so the words that I'm going to say are from Carl Sagan, famous astronomer and uh, scientist. In 1994, Carl Sagan published his book, Pale Blue Dot, a vision of the future of humans in space. And with that, I will finish my, my presentation today. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. And consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, any human being who ever was lived out their life the aggregate of our joys and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, 
inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there in a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could declare themselves the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturing, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we hold some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this speck of pale light. The Earth is a very lonely speck in this vast cosmic arena. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for now, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. And to me, there is no better demonstration of the folly of human conceit than this tiny, distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. Thank you.